Welcome to today's episode of the Grind Road to Success podcast, the place to be if you want to learn how to set yourself apart from the competition and reach your highest potential. I'm your host, Zach Krisik, and if you haven't already yet, hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on another podcast episode and the many tips, tricks, and strategies that can help you reach your highest potential. Without further ado, let's get into it. So today we have the pleasure to sit down and talk with Calgary Stampeders defensive lineman and 2018 Grey Cup champion, Derek Wigan. Derek is an alumni from the Queen's University and was drafted by the Calgary Stampeders in 2014. So thanks for joining us today, Derek, on the Grind Road to Success podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what I'd like to do, you know, starting off these podcasts is just get to know a bit about you and get a better idea of your experience, especially uh, growing up, you know, the student athlete lifestyle and what led you to where you are today competing at the CFL level um, and yeah, diving into things. Okay. So uh, I guess we can start from the beginning. Um, so I was born and raised in Toronto. Uh, then from there, uh, my football journey really started uh, grade eight. I just went to a new high school, St. Mike's in Toronto. It's a, uh, it goes from seven to 12. So really my football journey started there. Like I was always into sports. Like I played like touch football in the park or like basketball, volleyball, things like that. But the real like grade eight was really when my, I guess my, what it is now came into, came, became a, uh, possible. Uh, I went to a basketball camp and there when the coach, you know, that, you know, when they split kids into groups and like, tell us about yourself. So yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like, so one, so I was just like, yeah, I play football video games. I like play football in the park. And then from there, it's like, oh, we have a community football team. Why don't you come try out? So talk to my parents. They're like, why not? So pretty much as soon as I tried out for that, like basically I fell in love with the game. So I started at outside linebacker, then eventually moved to de- de- to defensive end. So it was like, you know, I met some of my best friends from play, like the nice thing that community college, that community summer team was the same guys that played that also went to my high school. So we got to play like eight months of the year together. So a lot of really tight bonds from that. Then, you know, as grade 11, most of my friends were a year older than me. So they were getting recruited. So, you know, it's kind of coaches are watching them and they're like, oh, who's that guy? Who's, is he, is he eligible? So that's kind of how I got my first like notice. Um, got a couple newspaper, like athlete of the weeks. Then from there started a recruiting process uh, Then chose Queens after uh, going on a couple of tours, my uh, grade 12 year which was, it was fun. It was a fun time. I went, made a visit to Michigan state. Uh, that was, that was just a cool experience of seeing like the fat, like the student engagement, just how much the campus of the football team. So Queens was probably like, gave me that closest image to that up here, just like just the community. And then once I was at Queens, I was a history major. Uh, I graduated uh, my first year was 2010. Unfortunately, they won the Vanier in uh, 2009, so I missed that by a year. <laughs> and, uh, so the the main selling point for me with Queens, as well as uh, academics and like the school spirit, was like a lot of those guys on that 09 team were graduating, so I had a chance to play right now. So that's kind of so I was able to start my first year. You know, to take your bumps as bruises. You know, kind of you're learning from there. Then each year just kept getting better, better body shape, better just like football intelligence wise. And then, you know, professional football didn't really become a thought to me until the after my junior year, the summer of my junior year, I got invited to uh, the East West Bowl. Um, if your listeners are familiar with that. Um, so the East West Bowls for uh, – juniors and Canadian universities that get to go kind of like an all-star game divided east 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 versus west um they use like it was at western my year um got some CFL coaching 
got to see who was going to be in my draft class, just kind of stack myself up against those guys. And, you know, I felt like I compared pretty, competed pretty well, had a pretty good game. Then going into my senior year, I opened up the year as a, as a top 15 draft prospect. Um, so that's where I'm like, Oh, this is like really could happen after that. My was all Canadian, my senior year, you know, get the, get the invite to the combine training for that. Um, ended up, you know, the combine process draft process and up getting drafted in the forefront, fourth round. Uh, uh, so then from there, I uh, went to, went to rookie camp and main training camp. Uh, no, they moved me to the uh, nose tackle. So that's much different than defensive end, different body requirements, different, you know, a little bit more sacrificing. So I wasn't physically ready at that point to send me back to school. I did my, I did my fifth year at Queens. Uh, unfortunately, again, in 2014, when I got drafted, the stamps won that year. So missed out again, <laughs> missed out on the ring again. Um, so from there, uh, then came back the next year, made the team in 2015, and I've been a part of the team ever since. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great story. Um, I'm curious, you know, what did you find the differences between the kind of levels you competed at? So, you know, were there big things that you realized from the high school level compared to the university level, um, you know, university level to the professional level you compete at today? Yeah, so when you go from high school university, it's a step faster. It's a step faster. It's a noticeable, like, your eyes are like, your body is, is kind of more, I feel like you're reacting. Like, your, your body's just going on instinct. And it's just like you're thinking, like, things move so fast. Then as you, once you get used to, like, once you get through, like, a year of it, like, the speed, you're used to the speed, then it's like, it's just, okay, I'm just, everything, I'm just, I'm, I don't have to overthink it. I'm just go play ball. Then when you get to the pros, like, um, it's that step faster, maybe, two, no, two steps, one, one to two steps faster. You, re, like, you realize, you see some dudes that that's true speed when they say 4-3 speed, and you see a 4-3 speed guy running, you're like, that is, that's fast. And you're seeing it in person. And then also, like, just on the line, just guys are stronger. Guys are grown men. You know, you're coming from college, and it's like there's a there's a reason why, um, you know, you can't just declare for the pro football drafts after your like your sophomore year or your freshman year. You don't have the physical strength to match up. So, you definitely feel that strength that strength hurdle and the speed then you're like, okay, I got to match myself up to that in order to survive. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, that's a very interesting point, you know, just talking about the speed of the game. Um, and as a college baseball player myself, that's one thing I noticed too, especially yeah. from a high school level, even to the university level, yeah. is how things speed up, right? The game's a lot faster. You got to be able to react yeah. a lot quicker. Um, I'm curious, you know, when I kind of look at some elite athletes or just, you know, those high performers like yourself, it seems like they're almost able to slow the game down and just kind of make it easier on themselves. I'm curious, you know, do you have any strategies or routines that you kind of do yourself to, you know, slow the game down, kind of stay in things, stay locked in and focus to maximize your performance and results? Uh, a lot of it was honestly, I just really focused on my technique. Like, the techniques, the first, I, in my experience with watching guys and, you know, coaching, like, little younger levels, it's just, like, even going through myself, the techniques, the first thing that goes, that goes, like, when you're tired, when you're fatigued, but if you really work on your technique to the point where, like, it just happens, like, a lot of stuff I do when I play, it just happens. You don't have to tell me what to do. Like, if you introduce a new technique with me, I have to, like, kind of, like, go slow thinking out but like when i rep it out even like rep it out in individual ep, do it bring it over to team periods and even outside of practice just working on those techniques where like i could be tired but those techniques are still i'm still going to do those techniques no matter what that's kind of a point where it helps adjust to this, uh, help your body your eyes adjust because it's like okay if this happens my body knows exactly what to do and just allows, I said, your eyes to catch up because it's like, okay, 
my lineman steps, my key steps down, I'm off his hip. Those things like that, where it's like your, like your body knows what to do, even though your eyes might see like, wow, this is fast. Your body's putting you in those positions because you've repped the technique enough. Then after it comes like the greatest teacher is just playing, man. Like once you, once you just not being afraid, be like, Hey, you know, like it is what it's going to be. Even if it's, it's fast, like I'm going to, you're going to catch up. It's going to catch up. It's not going to be too fast forever. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, no. And especially kind of along that process, right? Things get faster, things get more challenging. It can be very tough to, you know, stay consistent with the, the results yeah. you're getting. Um, but also just, you know, staying positive throughout that process. Cause I know how challenging right. it can be at, right as a student athlete in general, or just an athlete yeah. to perform and get the results you want. So how were you able to manage, you know, kind of facing those challenges, those roadblocks, those failures? What were some things you did to stay consistent, stay motivated, um, and just continue along your process? No, like, I got to give credit to my support, the support group, the people around me, you know, when, when I got, uh, so they put, so when I got sent back to school, I got put on the suspended list. So at the time, I didn't know what that was. I just thought it was cut. Um, so, you know, like I had to get kudos. My parents said, give it another shot. Like, you know, they're, they were more than happy with me giving it another shot. Like I already graduated. So I guess that took some stress off them. Like, they're just like, oh, he's already graduated. It's not like this is the end of the road for him at all. Like he, there's still things in life to do. Then like my college coach, um, Pat Sheehan, like he was really, he always checked in on me that first training camp, making sure I was all right. Um, and he opened, he was welcome. He was opening for me to come back for my fifth year and just, you know, just, you know, I, when you have just like other than like my trainer, like he was like, no, like now that we know what you're walking into, we could prepare better for it, you know? So when you have like those three sources there of support, but any, like, I feel any athlete, whatever level you are, you need that, you need that support group that could help you give know it when you feel you need you no know, kind of like those ropes in the wrestling ring you know give you that bounce right right back in the middle of it then from there it's just you know it's just kind of be having that belief in yourself like know it like i can do this i can do this like this isn't like i'm a, like i'm either going to accomplish it or i'm going to put everything on the line where i'm like you did everything. I did everything I could to make this football team. And if I don't make it and I did everything I could, there's no regrets. Then, you know, Hey, it is what it is, but you want to like, in those, like the setbacks would be like, I prepared the best way I could for this opportunity. And, you know, if my best doesn't stack up to this, to like what they're looking for, it like that sports, some that happens sometimes, but like, I feel most people like, if you could put your best foot forward into the opportunity, prepare the best way you could, then, you know, you can't have any, like, I believe you'll most time you'll succeed. And even if you don't, it's, you put all that effort in. It wasn't for nothing. You showed yourself that if you put your mind to something, like you came close to a goal, Hey, there's more goals. If you put that same amount of effort in you accomplish. Right. So it was just, um, so that's kind of what drove me is like, if I put my absolute best effort into this, I'm going to achieve my goal. So you, you kind of mentioned that mindset piece a bit, and I'm just curious, what was your mindset like going, you know, through your process, whether it be from high school to the levels you are at now, um, you know, what things did you kind of change along the way to help you, like you said, with the confidence piece, uh, stay motivated, consistent on your path, um, especially, you know, on the days, weeks, or kind of times you're struggling or things aren't going the way you want? Uh, so a lot of it was, so when I was getting ready for my second go around, like uh, my trainer started to start, that was the first year I started working with him. So we didn't touch any weights. We basically be like, we need to just move better. We need to move better. And, you know, like I, I was open to that because I did it the old fashioned way of, squatting forever benching trying to clean kind of snatch like all those w typical weight room things and it's just like hey like i'm not like you know what it comes down to i gotta move better i gotta be more athletic in my movements so we didn't touch weights that whole time like it was just body weight everything was body weight everything like single leg holds like 
like core work, just like different stuff where it's just being able to master your body weight. And then from there, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of for me, like going through that route is just like, I did all that training and like, it got me sent back. So, and no, why don't I do something different and be more athletic, being able to move better, even though I was, hev- even though I was 20. So I went into the, t- in, four- in 2014, I was 250 pounds. And then when I went to camp for the stamps in 2015, I was 270, but I moved way better. I just was able to move way better, add more flexibility and, and those type of things. So like from there, it was kind of, you know what, like I re- I recognize my limitations and just being like, you know what, I'm, I'm like, there's a level of strength. Yeah, I have to catch up. It's going to come to come. But if I'm good with, move, if I can move 270 pounds around quickly, explosively, that's going to go a long way for me. So that was kind of just having like, you know what, like I'm willing to take this risk. I'm willing to do, go the road less traveled. I'm confident in like, if I do like just doing something different was going to make a huge difference for me. And just the whole mindset, just like from just from the beginning was like being a, I'm fully confident in my effort. I'm fully confident. Like if I put my mind to something, I can accomplish it. And just and it's has never let me down, uh, you know. So it's just kind of you know being like you know like never like you know I've tried tried different things, but it's like did I truly put my heart into this? Where I could be like, there's not a single regret I would have. I didn't have like didn't have like I didn't have that whenever I put my full effort in. So I'm like, let me put my trust in me and the effort and how hard I work, and you know it's been successful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and especially relating to that confidence side of peace, I feel like that's a huge thing for so many athletes yeah. and realizing, you know, we got to look internal and have that internal self-belief yeah. to push forward, right? Get the results we yeah. want, um, stay consistent. Yeah. Especially throughout the process that we're taking. Um, but I'm, you know, curious, what kind of routines did you implement as well to help you, um, succeed, you know, get the results you want, but also, um, yeah, like you said, you're in the gym doing yeah no weight just focusing on mastering your body before you you know got to that next level uh but what like daily routines or weekly routines do you do to stay consistent stay healthy um and then keep getting you know the results you want moving forward so i started uh so during my like beginning of years like i started like meditating like there's this uh i don't know if you probably heard of this app called headspace yeah yeah like it's you know, just like, just taking like, you know, like, I, especially in my first year of playing, well, I would get like, so like nervous, you know, like, like, then pretty much like, after that, like, no, maybe my Yeah, after my first year of playing, I didn't get nervous anymore. But like, during that first year kind of helped calm down the nerves and all that, you know, all that go, go, go. Um, I would just take like 10 minutes like you know just to have like the headspace app on or even throughout the days where like just have that 10 minutes just to put that aside like you don't have to meditate you know but like anything where you could just have have that time for yourself just to kind of like do a little body scan just like you know acknowledge like kind of what you're feeling and to calm down or like a lot like to think about i like to be like a lake you know that hasn't been that has no ripples in it no like you know just a still lake and, you know, like, and just like, you know, you could react, just be still, just be calm, just like ready when you have to move, like say, like move, you can move, but like not have that tightness, you know, that tightness where like, oh, I really got to just be relaxed and clear head, clear headed going into it. Um, that was kind of like the first initial routine. Then I found that just having kind of like a warm up routine where I could do it every like a routine I do every day where if I know if I'm moving great with it or I'm moving or I'm kind of stiff so like say sometimes I do my workout routine like my little warm-up routine um the guys would make fun of me for it because I do it all I do it every day and like you know like I just say it's my activation it's how I activate you know 
Uh, but it's also kind of a little bit of a meditation thing too, just to like breathe through different movements and just like, okay, like, okay, my shoulder feels good. Hip feels good. And like, like, you know, you really feel good. Like on game day, when I do it, you do certain movements. Like you're like, oh, I'm just flying through this thing. Nothing feels stick, no sticky points in any of these movements. I'm just, I'm feeling really good going into a game. So just like, so I'd say first, yeah, definitely having that like kind of mental timeout you know, that 10 minutes where you just, you know, you just kind of clear your mind, um, like that some type of warm up move, like movement thing where it's like, this is my warm up. I do this all the time. I know when I do these movements, how it's supposed to feel, how it's not supposed to feel. And then kind of like recreationally, like really like I have ice cream to end each day. That's kind of like, you know, a little treat for myself at the end of the day, just be like, you know, I had to put a good day's work in. Let me enjoy my Hagen dazs chocolate ice cream and go on and go to bed. So that's kind of, I guess, like maybe like three moments where you just kind of be to yourself and just kind of focus inward. That's awesome. And yeah, that's a very interesting and great point you said about the meditation side. Um, because yeah, especially as athletes, right? There's so much always on the go. So many stresses, oh, yeah. pressures, yeah. right? You're always in your head. And just to be able to take, you know, like you said, 10 minutes of each day to just relax, calm down, just kind of decompress, process everything to, yeah, help you in the long term, right? To stay motivated, consistent, positive throughout that process can have a huge impact. Um, and yeah, that's one thing I started doing myself too, especially in the college years is yeah. starting to meditate more is just take, like you said, 10 minutes. And even before a game, I would do that where I just put my earphones, headphones in, yeah. um, where I just, you know, take time aside from everyone, just close my eyes and do the visualization, you know, before yeah. that big game and, you know, how do I want to perform? How do I want to play? And that helped me so much more compared to, yeah, like you said, you know, going into a game, uh, maybe nervous, kind of stressed out, whatever it may be. Um, and yeah. that has a huge impact, especially on your performance. Um, yeah. So, you know, are there any other kind of routines that you follow or that you recommend to other athletes, um, to reach uh, their highest potential? Like, I feel like some guys, like, you know, I've been around some guys that need to have this, like they're preparing hard all week, you know, and like, you know, they're even preparing day to the minute the game starts, right. Going over things. I have some guys that are like, you know, like kind of more loose, like kind of loose and kind of like, you know, they know what they got to do. Like it's kind of there, like that looseness is what get pushes them towards the game. Like for me, I'm kind of like I have my preparation. Like I'm kind of the haze in the barn by the time game day shows up. You know, like if I'm not prepared by game day, it's too late. So I'm kind of take more of that mentality where like I'm gonna prepare great. I have confidence in my preparation. How I take care of myself during the week, and as long as I have that the haze in the barn the game day it's like hey i just got to go do it there's no there's no one else to help me there's no more extra film to watch there's no more extra lifts to do what i that week the week those three four days i had to use to prepare for this game they're used up so if i have conf like having that routine something you have confidence no this works for me like just having something where i know as long as like these as long as i check off these boxes i'm gonna play well so you know you have that confidence Yes. Yeah. And that's another great point, um, especially on the preparation side, because I feel like so many, especially youth athletes, um, you know, expect to just prepare the day before. Right. Or, you know, just showing up yeah. and just showing up to practice your game. And compared to, I guess, elite athletes like yourself, where they're preparing way before, like you said, it's game day, right? You're showing up. You should already be prepared from the week before, um, and yeah, I feel like that has a huge impact on your performance, especially in the long run, right? You know, instead of showing up, just expecting to, all right, here we go. Here's another game. Hopefully we play well compared to showing up locked in, right? Knowing what you're going to do, what you need to execute. Um, and then I feel like it makes things so much easier, especially as the game goes on. Yeah. Like if you like, you know, like I kind of do it like, so say we have our day ones, kind of you get to learn what you're doing. Then day two is kind of like our like a lot more reps, a lot more like kind of game situations. Like day two, like kind of day twos for me, I treat that like that. I'm going to wear the cleats I'm going to wear in the game. I'm going to kind of 
have similar stuff I'll wear in the game. I'm going to wear that during that practice. So just, just, you know, just to prepare myself. Okay. This is like this I'm practicing at speed at, as close to game speed, you know, but like I'm practicing at like 90% game speed where I'm like, I'm working hard and making sure I'm doing like a lot of like really pushing myself that day where it's like, okay, like, you know, I push myself on the really, the get the, the practice day most similar to a game then you know then from there it's just like you know your the day the next day is just polish make sure assignment sound but like definitely having like just that confidence and like okay like i prepared i did everything i could to prepare for this game you know i did everything i could and that's the same even from before when i was like you know going into 2015 for me making the team is like you got at the end of the day you have to be able to look at yourself be like did i do everything i could to prepare for this game like you know you get some guys where like they have a bad game then it's like oh i gotta like do all these things now because i had a bad game then it's like no sometimes it's like no even if you do the routine sometimes no the way sports is might have a bad game regardless of that but at least something where you could be in the mirror like no i did everything i could you know, maybe I could have done maybe like a tiny percentage here and there, but for the most part, I did everything I could. Then like, you know, something you could have a bedrock of like, no, like, yeah, let me go to the well. Let me stay consistent with this. Like not like also the thing to stress is like just being consistent with it. Like the results are going to come. The results are going to be on their way. They might not be, you know, but you want to be able to put like, no, three four consistent weeks maybe one week that dips but it's not like a super like as a dumpster fire week you know it may be your like little dip then you're back to that consistent high level so that's kind of i found like from being from just being a professional so long just being someone where like people know what you do what you're doing on game day people or performance day everyone knows this is what we could pencil you in for if it's a bad day, that's an aberration. You're going to have ten, eight great days and maybe two so-so days. You want to be that guy instead of like a ten at, two 10 out of 10 days, two 2 out of 10 days. You get some eights, some fours. You know, you want to be that, like that's flashy, but you'd rather be the consistent dude, the consistent eight, eight to seven guy the majority of the time when you're performing. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point right there. And I feel like so many athletes expect, right, to either perform um, perfect all the time, right, but also understanding that we're all going to have our off days, right, especially as an athlete. Yeah. It's, you can't expect to always be perfect, right? You're going to have your off yeah. games, your off days. And especially being an athlete, there's so many more factors that affect your performance than, right, just the physical side. It is like you said, you know, how did you feel waking up? during that day what's on your mind during the game what are you focused in and that yeah right has a huge impact especially in the long term uh getting the results you want but like you said you know just staying consistent with the process and one thing i like to think simply is just getting better one percent each day right as long as yeah. you're getting one percent better each day you will get the results you want you just got to stay consistent with that rather than going forward and backward um each time yeah. so you know i want to kind of follow up with this question here what does performing at peak potential mean to you? Oh, peak potential. Like for me, like I'm thinking I could give you the stat line. I could give you, uh, but the feeling, I guess the more the feeling is like everything I'm doing is on point. Everything I'm doing is on point. Like if I'm playing the run, they're not, I'm getting knocked back. I'm getting no movement. Um, you know, I'm shedding blocks. Well, I'm running to the ball. I feel, I feel light out there. Like, I feel like I'm really imposing my will. Like, that's kind of like, I would think it's like in the zone where like, I, I'm imposing my will. Like everything I want to do, I could do. And like, I'm just a menace. That's kind of like the feeling for me. I've had, like, you know, you get close to that feeling. But there's, like, you always remember the games where, like, wow, like, I, you kind of realize you're in the peak, and it's kind of like, this is fun. This is fun. I'm, like, I'm in super mode. Like, you, you know, any of those, like, if you, if a video game person, you know, like, when you, like, Sonic, when you go, like, supersonic mode, 
you know, you're just, you're like kind of unstoppable. That's kind of how you feel. It's like, yeah, like whatever pass rush move I want to hit is hitting um, my get off. I'm just blazing off the line. Those things, feelings like that were like, yeah, I'm just, I'm on one today. And then there's some times where like, you just kind of, you're having a great game. And then it's kind of like, oh, okay. Like, I guess I'm playing pretty well right now. You know, it's kind of sneaks up on you. So that's kind of like the two kind of times where it's kind of like I'm doing the consistent things all the time and it ends up, oh, I'm having a really great game. I'm really performing well. Yes. Yeah. I, and I can relate to that, you know, back when I played, um, it almost feels like you get into that flow state where, like you said, everything's just yeah. fun. Everything, you know, flows and it feels like you don't even need to try your hardest or, right, you yeah. don't need to try any harder and put it any more work in it kind of just happens right and like you said yeah. those are the games where you're just like wow right i'm having a really good game performing really well feel really good about myself um but yeah it's just interesting you know how peak performers you know it, it almost seems just easy to them um you know yeah. looking at any player in the cfl nfl mlb nhl it's those hot performers it's just easy to them right it doesn't yeah. seem like they're they're even trying um you know, to, to, I guess, perform the best. Um, but what can other athletes do, you know, whether it's football athletes, other athletes in general do uh, to be able to perform and reach their peak potential? Like I find like it's the same thing, preparation in your routine, like everything I feel if you practice that way, where like you're doing, if you're practicing kind of like pushing yourself to limit or having a routine where like, you know, you know, everything you do to prepare yourself like it's not you're not gonna there's very very rare times you're just gonna do something you're not you haven't prepped for you haven't prepped to do it might come out like just inspiration you do it but there's also but there's like there's the few five percent of people that could just you know you know prepare like don't know what they're doing going into a, like whatever they have whatever game they have to get into they're just they just go out there and just everything activates and they go do their thing. There's not well, I'm not like that. I think major, there's those special guys that could just go do it. It doesn't matter how they're weak. So I'm curious now, you know, if you could go back um, to your youth years and kind of do everything all over again, what would be one thing that you do differently um, to be able to maximize your performance and potential um, and just see the success that you really desire? Honestly, like, there's not much I would do, like, change it, because, like, everything kind of led to, like, lessons that I learned now. Uh, maybe kind of how I trained back then. That's probably the biggest thing I would, cha like, change. But it's kind of, like, also, um, I don't know how, like, if I started training how I train now from an earlier age, I think that probably would have been maybe the thing I would change, like, that's probably number one change, but it's not like that much where it's like it affected, like it would have been, maybe I would have tested a little better or like might've been ready from like been re like, I don't even think I could have been ready knowing what position change. So maybe I've been, would have been a little, little bit more athletic, a little bit more tested, a little better in the combine. But like, other than that, like, there's not really much to, I feel like I would change. Like everything's been so educational for me getting to the point I am. Awesome. Awesome. I'm curious, you know, from your experience, who had some of the biggest impacts on you, especially as an athlete, or who were some of your heroes or coaches um, that led you into the direction and essentially the person you are today? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, my buddies I played football with in high school, just like, you know, like we were so tight knit and that's what kind of helped me. Football was really like was fun playing, but just playing with all my friends just made it so much more fun. So that kind of motivate like when we would work out together, practice together. It's just fun because like you just hang out with the guys and it's like everyone's working hard. So that kind of like motivates you to work hard as well because, you know, you won't want to be the last person in the drill you know, cause like, you know, you're going to hang out later. You guys, someone might bring it up and like, you know, just kind of like just being around like 
you, like people that you like love and trust. And like, you know, like we're competing together towards one goal. Um, you know, pro athlete wise, like I was a big James Harrison fan, like, you know, little undersized, but like a, just, just the way he worked out, this is work ethic, you know, like he wasn't the highest drafted guy. He w- got a cu- couple times, but kept like just the perseverance and like kind of his mentality out there. Um, who else? Like love Derek Jeter growing up, like, you know, just the guy, consummate professional, consummate, like consummate captain. Um, uh, who else? Um, then from there is kind of like, I guess those are like the main two Then just like kind of different, just different role models of like guys around. Like even when I was at Queens, like the guy getting to know a couple of the guys that were from the 2014, like, championship team just kind of the men they were and kind of how they like went about their business you know the guys were like you know they had to climb the mountain of you know like going through first year struggles second year struggles third year fourth year finally climbing the mountain just being like no what like i don't know if you know too much about queens is like kind of that's kind of like our cycle a bit like before we like around where I was, was like, you know, have a couple down years and co- then come back up, then a few down, come back up. So it was just kind of like knowing, like, you know, this, the climb to the mountain is worth it. You, like the climb, this climbing to the mountain is so worth it. And it, it's okay for the, you enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Enjoy the journey, right? Because if you're not, why are you doing it in the first place? That's one thing I always, you know, look back on or really try to, uh, put into perspective is, you know, do I actually enjoy this? Am I having fun with what I'm doing? Because, you know, of course, you got to sacrifice, right? You got to put the hard work in. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying that process, right, it's going to be very tough to, you know, stay consistent, stay happy and motivated, especially as the further you go along. Um, so, you know, I'm curious, when you competed at, at Queen's, how were you able to manage kind of that student athlete lifestyle? Because I know that's one thing I found, you know, really difficult uh, when I competed as a col- college ball player, trying to manage both the sports side of things, but the academic side. How were you able to kind of manage that, you know, stay consistent, stay motivated, um, stay positive throughout that process? Uh, so it's just sort of for me. So I did, I did football, school, and like I worked two jobs. So a lot of it was... Um, like, you know, internal motivation of like, hey, like, you know, if this is going to work, like we got to, I would plan out my classes like before class selection day, class selection day. I guess I always like, I've been a bit of a planner. So I'm like, okay, this is like what my football schedule is going to be. So like, say when I worked, I'm like, I could only work these days during the football season, like get, get football. It's tr- like, it's like the, the time I needed, like everything I needed for it, when I need to lift and all those types of things. Then with school, everything's kind of like, I kind of pushed it where everything was in the morning, where it's just kind of just planning it out. Also goes back to high school as well. Like we took, like I pro- do it. I took, I played sports year round at high school. Plus like our course load, we took like basically, basically eight each, like, no fall than like the winter semester so like i got kind of the time at managing school and sport from high school then kind of that carried over to university where i was like okay like this is kind of what i need to do time-wise school-wise as history major so the paper so i'm like okay this is how much time i need to write a rough draft this is how much time i need to type and just like even like me still this day i write everything out like just like sticky notes, calendar, just having it, being able to see stuff, I find it's helpful to remember due dates and all that. So just being able to write stuff, just put it all up, just calendars, whatever, just something visual where you can just see, okay, this is when stuff is due. This is when stuff is happening. Just being able just to plan it out like that, being like, okay, like this paper is due, say today's Friday, this paper is due next Friday, okay. I know I need, I need at least, I need to start the process by Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Tuesday I'm brainstorming. Wednesday I write the rough copy. Maybe Thursday's a little rough copy. Start to type the final copy, finish the final copy, hand it in. So that's kind of like 
just knowing kind of, okay, like this is how much time I need. This is how much I need to block out and going from there. Gotcha. And that's some great advice, especially for all, you know, listeners and especially student athletes. Um, that time yeah. management side, right, is so, so key to, uh, you know, getting the results you want, staying consistent, motivated. Um, but yeah, you know, getting things done, planning ahead, like you say, can help so much in advance, you know, limit that stress, especially moving forward. Um, you know, I, I'm yeah, curious. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be like us to add. No, just want to add to that. Like, you're not going to get perfect the first time. It's kind of a little bit of a trial and error of like, because you got to kind of know your learning speed and like how long it takes you to complete stuff. So you got to, um, you know, it's kind of a little trial and error. But once you get the hang of it, it's kind of okay. You know what you got to do. For sure. For sure. Yeah, that's another great point right there. Um, yeah, you know, just especially relating to the point of failure. Um, I feel like so many athletes are scared to fail, right? Scared to, you know, step outside their comfort zone a bit, whether it's in school, whether it's in sports or whatever. Um, but just understanding, yeah, nothing's going to be perfect the first time. So you might as well just take imperfect action, right? Create that rough draft that eventually turns into that awesome paper, right? Or, you know, take the imperfect action in the gym or on the field. So you eventually get the results you want. Um, yeah. And I'm just curious, you know, what's kind of your learning style relating to that? Are you more of kind of just trial and error, you know, figure it out, it's kind of fail, um, and learn from the process. Like you said, um, you're big on the planning side of things, but you know, what was kind of your learning strategy or how can you essentially increase the process? Um, yeah, to getting the results you want and, and just achieving the results you truly desire. Yeah. So I kind of, you gotta give yourself some grace. You gotta be, give yourself some grace of like, know what? Like, it's okay if I make mistakes. It's okay. Like, we don't. There's no one that's perfect in this world. You gotta be like, know what? Mistakes will be made, and that's kind of part of growing up. But for me, my learning style, I was very much. I needed to write stuff down. Like, like when I'm take, like when I'm not. I wasn't really like. I'm pretty good like reading comprehension. I could read something and remember it. But like for me to truly like notice stuff, I have to write and take notes. That's where that's like I could do just the highlight and read, but I feel more comfortable if I write, take notes, just kind of put it in my own language, like kind of put my own short term, like shorthand, like very shortcuts to certain words. Cause like when I'm writing like Sam for an exam and like idea is more easier for me to come to my mind if I've like kind of written it out before. I've cut, like written in some way about it where I'm like, oh yeah, this is how I wrote it. This is kind of how I, an example I gave myself to remember it. So just like kind of my learning style is definitely like write, like take notes, write even whatever, even how trivial the notes may be, like just write, just write it out, recopy the notes. Just kind of, that's kind of like how I kind of learned from there. A little time intensive. So that's why I kind of knew how much time I needed for uh to take, notes and how they would fit in a schedule but like my my most ideal is to take notes and write it out gotcha yeah and you know i can relate to that that's one thing that helps me a lot just to get your thoughts out of your head right because we have so many things we're always thinking about so many yeah. things going on up there right whether it's school sports relationships work right there's there's so much in every single day uh but just being able to get that out right just actually visually see it um, all right, this is what I need to get done on this date. Um, here's these notes, right, I took. And yeah, just kind of organizing everything to make it a bit easier on yourself. Sometimes it's, it's great to just, you know, like whatever, just to see it on paper and just to read it. Like, oh, okay. Like, you know, just kind of like, just to look at it, just see it visually. For sure. For sure. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Um, yeah, like I said, whether it's in you know, your sports, uh, kind of learning the playbook or in school, right? Just seeing it visually makes it huge. Um, but yeah, you know, I just want to kind of fast forward now to, to your CFL career um, and specifically talking about your uh, Grey Cup experience. I bet that had to have been, you know, an awesome experience, awesome feeling, especially winning that. Um, but, you know, I really want to ask you, what was kind of like your mindset going into that? Was it different from most games you played? Did you prepare any different uh, kind of walk me through that process and, and that experience as a great cup champion. Uh, so 
there is a lot of desperation going into that one in 2018. Um, so the previous two years, we made it to the Great Cup, but we lost those games as heavy favorites. So we so going into this third one, you know, like this is a point kind of like this was like our like window kind of like clo- starting to close. Like guys are going to be free agents. Guys were leaving. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you don't want to be like that team that went to the championship three times and then win any of them, you know. So just like kind of like being on so many ta- on so many talented teams and not accomplishing it. This is something where I think everyone, like even for me, is like we have to win this game. Like I don't care what we have to do, we have to win this game. There's no, there's no like whatever kind of the. I think the message overall is like it doesn't matter what you have to do to get yourself ready for this game. Be get ready for this game because we have to win this. There's no if ands buts about it. This game has to be won. So kind of that was the mentality all week. Like just guys you know what, doing extra, like, even like for me, like going to do my routine, like just finding a gym, you know, finding it, waking up early, finding a gym where I can work out and, you know, just like prepare that way and just making sure I get extra film, even though we've played the team, we've played fairly familiar with them, just watching extra, just watch extra, just kind of, it was just kind of going into a game. Like, it was just kind of one of those things, like, this is a game we must win. This is like, (laughs) <laughs> like not you don't want to do anything like at, over and everything like that, but it's like this is a game that must be won. So with that, did you kind of feel like you were almost an underdog going into it, or did you feel like you were that heavyweight champion um, already? You know, especially besides whatever the odds were on the game, how did you kind of feel? Um, and you guys feel as a team, especially going into that game, like you said, you were willing to do whatever it takes, you know, you had to win. There was no other option, but yeah. What was kind of the mentality with the the kind of team? Did you feel like that underdog or did you guys know you were going to be the champions at the end of the day? Uh, so funny, like talent wise, like, I feel like we would, like, we were like, especially in those years, talent wise, like we had more talent than everyone else. It was just one of those, like, we kind of felt like the villain, like the underdog, like pretty much in all the great cups we went to, we got booed, like pretty much everywhere we went, we got booed and stuff. So it was kind of like people making the jokes, oh, the Calgary Stampeders choke all the time. Like, they're not going to win this game. They're chokers, yada, yada, yada. So it's just kind of like, no, we got to, we got, like, forget anyone else. Just prove to ourselves, like, we can win the big one. We can win, like, all this hard work we put in off season, during the season to get all these wins and all these, all these stats. Like, you have to show, like, in the highest, platform for our league that we could win the championship so it was just so it's more like i felt like kind of our backs are getting the wall underdog mentality like we're gonna like we're gonna like i believe like in the men in this room we could win this game we just gotta go show everyone else that we can win this game gotcha gotcha um you know i'm curious you kind of mentioned you know like you said you went into the games and you felt like not necessarily the underdog, but you had the booze, you had the crowd against you or whatever it may be. How do you as an athlete, especially at that level, handle that pressure or handle those standards, um, handle that negativity? Because I feel like that's one thing that affects athletes greatly is, yeah, you know, you walk into an opponent opponent stadium and you're getting booed. Well, mentally, that's got to really kind of mess with you. And I'm just curious, how did you kind of deal with that? um and yeah you know kind of what was your thinking um dealing with that negativity um whether it be on the field or off honestly i go more the like once i step between the white lines like i don't even notice the crowd like there's certain things like communication wise if it's loud like it's loud but like in regards to more like i hear like the decibels but i don't really see like focusing on faces in the crowd or like what they're actually saying is just more like this is the most important thing. The outside noise, that doesn't matter. It never did. Like, you know, it's great for the atmosphere if you're in the crowd watching the game or on TV, but for guys on the field, like, that doesn't matter. You know, when you kind of, you know, it's kind of one of those where, like, you maybe, like, keep it in, you know, you you put it away 
put it away then you know say if you're up big then you can like hush the crowd and all different stuff but for me it's just more i don't even notice i don't even notice the crowd who like once it's once i'm on the field it's the field like i don't even beyond yeah it's loud i don't like it's just kind of white noise loud white noise and just go about my business so you're just so locked in and focused that it kind of really doesn't matter everything's just phased out yeah, like kind of goes back to kind of like that meditation thing I like I do. It's just like I'm so focused in on me and what I have to do where kind of all that outside stuff, like it doesn't phase me. It's kind of I know what the mission is. I know what I have to do. I'm locked in to 100% focus into what I have to do. Like the all that stuff around, you know, raise the volume levels a bit, but it's nothing I need to like really is I've never found any level I've played where I'm like, oh my goodness, like the crowd, the crowd, the crowd, the crowd. It's never been, it's never been like I appreciate it, you know, going into sorry for your heart, like the riders, like going into most like uh, mosaic and like you know, it's loud, rowdy, you know, it's like that's my favorite place to play, you know, just crowd atmosphere, but I'm never like oh my goodness, the crowd said this and that and they're chanting this and that. It's like, no, nah, this game, that's got the blinders on. So, you know, what was kind of your, I guess, or how did it feel to win that great cup? You know, was it just a big kind of sigh of relief or how did it feel in that moment to be a great cup champion and kind of just realize that all the hard work you put in, those early mornings, the late nights, um, how did it feel, you know, to, to kind of pay off and then? Oh, it was a tremendous weight off my shoulders. I, I think for everyone, it was a weight off your shoulders because it's just like, we finally won one of these. We finally did. This is what it feels like to not be in the locker room upset, regret, all those things. Just be like, man, like, we, this is what it feels, this is what it's like to actually win one. This is what this cup feels like. It's not even that heavy. Just, you know, just that entire weight of like this thing. We finally accomplished this thing. This thing is done. Like the job is done. You know, everything we set out to do is done. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, it must have been an unreal and surreal feeling, especially in that moment. Um, but, you know, I know as an athlete, we all have goals. You know, that's that's just the beginning. Um, so I'm curious, you know, what are your goals, Derek, moving forward? What would you like to achieve in the future as an athlete um, or just someone in general? Uh, so I always, like, I always make goals for myself every year. So, you know, for me, it's just kind of keep upping my level of play. Just keep, re you know, I want to do better each and every year. I want to, like, you know, there's always things that could be worked on. There's always things you never really, at least I've never gone in and seen, like, no, I don't need to work on everything else. This is all good. You know, you always want to be, a, no, I can work on my strength a little better. You know, I can work on my conditioning a little better. I could work on finishing plays, you know, work on my technique. Like, there's always, I always set, like, about three or four goals for myself. Just, like, you know, I want to up my level of play every year. Um, you know, like, the beast. be even stuff like, you know, I want to win another championship. I want to win another championship. I want to, I would like to raise that cup one more time um, before it's all said and done for me. And that's, you know, like just being able to play all 18 games. Like that's something I always write down. I want to play in every game. I want to be consistent. I want to be healthy and get through a whole season. And then just life goals, just kind of more just like, you know, just keep finding ways to improve off the field and just like build like, just you know just find ways just to in life just different little goals even like beating video games how many i want to beat in a year just stuff like that where i like you know i have something i can work towards i love it i love it yeah just having that competitive edge especially as an athlete right always wanting to get better always want to improve and yeah that's awesome and wish you uh, the best of luck with that and and your career and goals moving forward. Um, but yeah, in closing this podcast, I just want to ask you one final question. You know, Absolutely. you've you've already given us so many so many great insights, perspectives, uh, pieces of advice. But I want to ask you, you know, what is the one or biggest piece of advice you'd give to other athletes um, in order to reach their highest potential and just see success within their their sport? Um, number one, I'd say. 
give yourself grace, you know, like whatever you're trying to accomplish something, it's not going to be just a, at some point, no matter how talented you are, you're going to encounter bumps in the road. You just got to be how you handle those bumps of the road or is how you're going to determines kind of your success at the ultimate goal. Like, you know, some people get those bumps in the road in high school. Some people get the bumps in the roads, their third, second, their second, third year of being a professional, you know, it's just, when you encounter those bumps in the road, how how do you respond to them? Do you bounce back? Do you blame other people? Um, you know, like, do you look at yourself and be like, you know what, like, I could have handled these better and I will handle the future bumps in the road even better than this. So it's just having grace and just, you know, being with yourself with mistakes and just being, you know, prepared for, you know, not like, uh, you no, know, just those bumps in the road and just being good to go, being good to go when you need to. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. You know what? I want to thank you very much, Derek, for taking the time to sit down with us on the podcast today and share your insights. Um, yeah. You know, just other skills and strategies that athletes can use to be able to perform at their highest potential, whether that's on or off the field. So yeah. Thank you very much for taking your time uh, to sit down with us today. Hey, no problem, Zach. I appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Well, all the best. Man, I appreciate it. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. Awesome. Thank you. You as well. All right. Take it easy.